Hi, this is Tom Soane and welcome to another episode of The Anonymous Landlord. And today we're talking about tax and accounting for landlords and property investors. And I am very, very privileged to be joined by the one and only Rob Milner. Hello, Rob. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Good, good, good. And we've just finished a round of golf. We went out really early and I thought I'd jump on him and get a, uh, a spontaneous podcast out of him just to give some advice and some tips to any landlords and property investors about optimizing your tax, optimizing your accounting and your bookkeeping and hopefully within all of that we'll have a couple of little words of wisdom uh, on how you can keep yourself above board. So look Rob let's fire straight into it shall we? If you're alright with that I'm fine. Cool, cool, cool. So look, first thing is most of the people that listen to my podcast are already landlords and there are some people that are looking to get into property investing, buy properties to keep. Um, so first of all, either buying a limited, buying a property as a limited company or buying it as an individual, what's your views on that, pros and cons and so on? Well, the first point to take note of when you're buying a property is what you're buying that property for. So that will change the decision whether you buy it as an individual or as a couple or as a limited company. So there's a difference between buying a property to flip, if you have solid intentions to sell, or buying a property that you're going to own to pass down potentially through a trust to children, um, or owning a property that you're going to have with a, with a spouse to take advantage of two lots of capital gains allowances. So the most important thing before you start any landlord journey is understanding your exit plan for each individual property. Okay, cool. So in that instance, if, if somebody was gonna buy a property and they were gonna just keep hold of it, rent it out, uh, what sort of things would they look for? If to, when they're thinking about, shall I buy it as a limited company? Shall I buy it as an individual? What sort of things could well, they look for? Well, once they've decided, we've, this is property that I'm gonna own and I'm gonna have it for a, a good amount of time, 15, 20 years, to get the rental yields off the property. I'm on my own, I'm not buying it with anyone else, therefore you set up a limited company, you're gonna pay corporation tax on your profits. If you're a landlord and you've got a high, well-paid job outside or you're a higher rate taxpayer, it means it's the most beneficial way of um, taking the profit out of the rental or building up the rental profits and buying another property in the company name. I think the key to remember with, when we're talking about companies is companies are a separate legal entity. So Mr. Jones is a separate legal entity. Mr. Jones Limited is a separate legal entity. So they each have their own representation. So it's quite important to understand that the limited company road becomes its own beast. It's its, it's its own incorporated body that owns the property. One of the questions we get quite a lot is should I move my existing rental property into a limited company? And the answer is well, potentially, but when you do move that limited that property to the limited company, you're going to be subject to capital gains tax if there's profit on that company. And that might change your mind as to whether you keep it as an individual. And then it's technically a, a purchase, isn't it? So you absolutely. probably pay yeah. stamp duty as yeah, well. Absolutely. So the company is buying the property from the landlord, but it's very easy, particularly first-time landlords, to have in their head that it's my property. Mm. And it, but it's not. It would then be transferring to the limited company's property. Yeah. No, I get it. So really, if you're if you're going to buy a property in a limited company, you're only going to pay the tax uh, on the corporation tax, which is on the profits. Yes, absolutely. The yes, yeah, absolutely. You're going to pay some dividend tax when you draw the money out if you choose to draw the money out of the limited company. Yeah. There's a world where you build up your profits to buy more properties in the limited company. Um, yeah. The difference being with uh, uh, when you get rid of these SPVs, special purpose vehicles, which is where we buy the, the properties through. Depending on the amount of value left in the company when you choose to close it or sell a property, that's when we're talking about entrepreneur's relief or business asset disposal, as it's now called. Um, and that's a different equation, but you, that's why I went to the first point of what do you want to do eventually with this property that you're now going to own. Um, because a lot of cases, when it's husband and wife owned, and you intend to sell the property, a lot of cases you may as well take two lots of capital gains allowance of 12,300 and offset that against a profit, and that kind of works better for you. But like I say, it's all about knowing what you intend to do. 
Yeah. Do you know what? You've said a few things there, which, you know, I hear quite a lot. People say that oh, I'm going to do a flip, buy it, do it up, sell it for a profit. And, you know, a flip can be a short term thing. It can be a long term thing. You don't have to flip it within six months. You might decide to buy it, do it up, keep it for a couple of years, see the market grow and then and then sell it later. But what you're saying is effectively you need to work out the actual calculation of your tax position because otherwise you might pay you know you might own it individually but it might be more beneficial to own it between you and your partner yeah because then the capital gains tax is shared what we're saying is there's no black and white yeah what you need to know is you need to have a rough idea of the journey of that property and if you've got a rough idea of the journey of that property then you can make a more informed decision yeah, and what we really should do, look, it's always the same with these things, isn't it? You should talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about. You know, we can, well, look, we can go online and we can watch YouTube videos and we can do training courses and all of that, and we can get a basic idea of tax, um, but actually it's better to talk to a full-time, to an extent, every journey's ever so slightly different. Yeah. Every journey's ever, so one guy is buying it to sell and make some profit in 10 years. One guy is, or girl, is buying it to build up a portfolio to leave to their children or to their cats, whatever <laughs> they're deciding to do. But every journey is ever so slightly different. Yeah. So there is no one size fits all. This is how you should buy a property. That's a really good point. Because I do think there is a misconception where property investing is one single um, practice but you know different properties different profits different purchases different types of investing different types of exit you're absolutely right and also the people buying the property as well if you're like you said earlier if you're a high income earner then the chances are if you then add rental income to your income you're going to pay income tax on it yeah. at a higher rate that's obviously before we've even mentioned about mortgage interest right, and right. The lack of benefit of uh, having your mortgage interest as an individual as you can claim it through the company whether you're buying commercial property whether you're buying residential property so it really is it's quite frustrating to try and that see people trying to nail it down to a one size fits all because it really doesn't apply it like you said speak to an expert and get some advice okay so what i would take from that if i was listening to this i would take from that that you know generally speaking if you're a higher rate earner then it may well be more beneficial to buy and keep a property as a limited company because then you won't pay income tax at a higher rate you'll pay corporation tax on the profits whereas there are other instances where you might buy it as an individual, uh, sorry, you might buy it with your partner and then benefit from other tax Absolutely. benefits. Right. With all of it, again, note your journey, make sure you're clear of what your journey is going to be. It can, it can change, but as long as you've got a basic idea at the beginning of where you're trying to get to, yeah, it helps an awful lot. And the main thing is to make sure when you start your accounting or your landlord journey, make sure everything is documented yeah thoroughly documented dated recorded if you're changing your principal place place of residence to a rental property what's the valuation at that date when did you change it from a principal place of residence all these things need to be recorded yeah um, the hardest job is to work backwards and someone says well I left my family home in 2017 ish and now I'm selling it and you have to go back and try and justify where the value of these are when it became a, uh, a, a asset for as a land for a rental income property so it's quite important to get everything documented yeah I'm a big advocate of software as you well know I do even for um, small businesses small landlord projects get yourself on zero free agent a similar sort of accounting package takes all the hassle out for you the spreadsheet can't be deleted the cash book <laughs> can't be lost at the bottom of a drawer yeah um, the, the notes can't be destroyed in a fire it's a fantastic package and you know where you are then and any good accountant can give you advice quickly off the back of the data that you've already prepared yeah um, and look by the way anybody listening to this I, I am interviewing Rob here like I say we just had a game of golf which Rob won um, but thank you Tom <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it would be really good because Rob's my accountant. He manages uh, account the accounting for all of my property business as well as my other businesses as well. So I thought it would be a really good idea to get him to talk through a bit about the questions that I'm always asked. 
And one of them is, now should I buy this as a limited company or as, as an individual? So the answer to that, if anybody has that question, is of course, depends on your exit, depends on your journey, depends on what you're doing with the property. But generally speaking, you've got to buy the property in the entity that is gonna cost you the least in tax. So you can have that calculation done for you by a good accountant. And if you wanna connect up with Rob, then just reach out to me, just send me an email, or you can contact me through my Facebook page. Or by the way, if you're looking to get into property investing or you're a landlord already, that you want to improve your existing property or grow your portfolio, then set up a discovery call with me, it's free. It's about half an hour, sometimes I waffle on a bit more than that, but it's about half an hour and we'll talk through your current situation and where you can go, what your options are and, um, and so on. Anyway, the next thing I just wanted to find out from Rob very briefly is if you are a landlord currently, what, what sort of top tips would you have to keep your bookkeeping in order, your accounting in order? What practices would you advise a landlord to follow so that his whole property operation is in order? First thing, separate bank account. Bank account solely for the rental income and the expenditure for that property. Quite often we see someone renting a property through their main bank account, comes very muddied. Keep it separate. Bookkeeping package, as I've mentioned, zero free agent or similar, makes it nice and clear. You want to get to the end of the year and know what your profit is um, and keep your records in one place. Now, that could be as efficient as a Dropbox system or something online, or it could be the, the drawer or the bin liner or the glove box. But as long as all your records in one place, it makes everything much easier at the year end. But do keep those records. Yeah, even receipt, look, especially if you're buying as a limited company, by the way, um, if you keep all your receipts. In you all keep, cases, Tom, in all cases. In all cases, in all, all right. Cases, keep those receipts, keep that documentation. Um, HMRC do exist, they are there. They will come and ask you <laughs> awkward questions. Um, there's no hiding from them. And if you need to prove a receipt, at least have that image of that receipt somewhere. Yeah, I agree. And you know what I like about working with Rob is that I'm told what to do. And I think that's what makes a good accountant. There are so many accountants and I've, I've dealt with them before that um, kind of pander to the customer's needs or wants, whereas Rob and his team, they tell me what to do. You mean we say no sometimes? <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. And as frustrating as that might be, it's actually correct because really what we're trying to do is either build a business or build a property business. That's what it is. We're all property investors. Well, we're looking for tax efficiency. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's yeah. the key word. Yeah, tax efficiency. I like that pay as little tax as possible. Okay, so we've got some good stuff there. Um, we've talked about keeping your books, keeping your accounting in order, um, separate bank account like that, expenses, keep them tracked, keep them all in one place as well. Um, and I've mentioned how to contact Rob. So I just wanna close this off and we'll have many more chats with Rob, but I wanna close this off by asking Rob, what would you say are the top pieces of advice maybe, or top warnings for anybody who is buying and keeping property? One single piece of advice is to understand the journey that you're taking up. Know where you're going to. Don't buy a property because it looks like a good deal. Buy a property because it's a good deal and you intend to make X amount per month from the property deal or make £10,000 in the next five years, but know your intentions of what the deal is actually about. I love that, thank you very much. And we would call that in the property game an exit plan. So I like that. And by the way, your exit doesn't have to be disposal. Disposal and exit are two different things, in my opinion. Your exit could be refinancing. Your exit could be rent profit. Your exit could be selling, whatever it is. Brilliant advice. Understand what your actual exit plan is. And you can have multiple exits, by the way. It doesn't have to mean disposal. Right. I'm going to leave you to Great that. stuff. And I'm... thank you very much for a thrashing today on the golf course. <laughs> uh, really enjoyed it. And hopefully, if anybody wants to contact Rob, then they can do so by emailing me and I will connect you up by email or you can contact me through the Facebook. But until then, remember that your property is not your baby. It's not your life, your love, your passion. It's nothing more than a vehicle which is designed to make profit without you. And that is the key to being the anonymous landlord. So until next time, speak to you all later. Cheers, Rob. Bye-bye.